What if you have a floor and you have machinists and you have the head programmer and that programmer refuses to think outside the box? That programmer has an attitude that says, you know what, this is the way we've always ran it. Those machines have ran flawlessly for 10 years, so don't mess with it. Let's just move over here, utilizing the same technology that we're used to. What if you have a programmer with a bad attitude, with poor communication, who doesn't document things clearly and forces set up people and operators to figure it out? What if you have a programmer that dictates the pace and the pace is negative and dreary and the company is struggling. And in that, almost guaranteed, you'll have individuals that feel like they're not getting paid what they're worth. And they'll look at the owner, they'll look at the president, the vice president, the foreman, and the leads, and they'll say, you're not paying me enough for the daily work that I do. I have a wife, I have a husband, I have kids, I have a house, or I can't even afford a house. And I've been here for 20 years putting the time in. Now it is the owner's fault for not paying you money, but not for the reason that you are thinking. Because the owner and the leaders, whoever is responsible for the payroll, is in a world that is a direct reflection of the productivity and the profit from the machining which lives under the programmer. Now, if you're a customer giving work to a company and you see a dirty shop and a bad attitude and old machines, do you want to give work to that company? What if you see a company down the street from that one that has a positive attitude? They might have old machines, but they run them efficiently and they machine amazing parts and deliver them on time. Who are you going to give the work to? One shop is inevitably going down and one shop is inevitably going up. Well, Titan, you said you were going to fire somebody, right? You're going to separate yourself from somebody and they're going to lose their job. Who is that? It is the programmer if he or she refuses to change, refuses to adapt, refuses to look outside the box, refuses to look at new technologies and put the time in as a leader that's needed. Being a head programmer in a shop is not a 40 hour job. It is a lifestyle. You put the time in with your kids and your wife or your husband and you do what's needed. But when you have some alone time, research technology, watch videos, look at the surface foot and the chip load and the style of cut and the style of tools and figure things out. So when you go back to work, you can implement new processes and new technologies and new tools and new work holding ideas, right? A lot of things that I do, I actually think of at two in the morning or I'll wake up and I'll be like, that's how I do it and I bring it to work. But it's because I'm watching videos and reading books and reading magazines. But wait, Titan, I actually work my 40 hours and I'm not required to work any more than that. So I'm gonna write my programs, I'm gonna do my job, I'm gonna give them what I told them I would, and then I'm gonna shut the light off, I'm gonna shut the door, and I'm gonna go enjoy all of this. That's fine, that's perfect. And you deserve this much money which is exactly what they promised you if you're fulfilling your duties and if you're helping them make a profit and being the right leader. But if you want to rise to greatness, if you want to be a part of something that is amazing, you are a programmer. Your mind dictates the pace of all of it. Take it serious, investigate, dedicate your life to it and then help the company and help all the employees, help everybody rise. And at that moment when the entire floor rises and everybody else deserves more money, you, my friend, would have showed your worth. Your worth will be known. And either that company or another company will pay you the money needed to not only support yourself, but support your family and ensure that you all have a great life because one person dictates the pace. It takes a team, it takes culture, but one person dictates the pace. If you're not that person that thinks outside the box, if you're the negative person, your abilities and your skill levels is holding the company back, then it is the company's responsibility to let you go because there's a whole team and a whole company 
is ready to rise and they need the right person that can help lift everybody up. If your boss is the guy from my video, do not let it affect you. Keep rising to greatness. Keep serving him. Keep serving the company. Keep serving all the employees and keep learning as much as you can during the period that you're at that company. Hone in on defining the fine details. Hone in on your workmanship, on your productivity, and truly work to be a pillar in that company. Because it's not about your boss. It's about the team. It's about the company. And it's about your future. When you do the right thing and you don't compromise, when you serve others, doors have a way of opening and you never know where you're gonna be a year from now. As for me, I'm just like, if we're gonna be in this shop, if we're gonna run all these parts, we're gonna run these machines, I'm gonna put my time in, then let's like murder some chips. Let's walk fast, let's kill our setups. Let's run fast when we need to and come back and kiss that baby and make it beautiful and just take pride in all of it. Just grab the horns of that production and just lift it up. Because you know what, when you have that type of passion and you have that type of excellence and you're about that type of quality, all of that is contagious. Everybody catches it and everybody rises. I'm out, you guys have a great day.